And now I will activate the ability in 3, 2, 1. I know it's not just me noticing the fact that so many like new and popular Roblox games just have like abilities now. And I'm not even talking about like the 50th anime game on the homepage. I'm talking games where you don't even really expect abilities. Like remember when like the first Thor's update came out with like the crucifix? And it's like when you held it like the monsters would all like be chained. Like bro that's an ability. And that was really cool. So why am I even making this video? Because there's literally a formula to making whatever ability you want. And it's so easy that even if you've never developed in your life. Never Never touched a piece of code, never touched a computer, by the end of this video you will understand everything about how to make abilities in Roblox, I guarantee it. Now obviously, to actually make an ability, we need an idea for an ability. So just for example, an ability that I think would be funny is make every player explode. And look, I understand, you know, it's a simple ability, I've done, you know, more complex ones before, but even if you're trying to make like a difficult to code ability, I'll still show you how to do that. But the next step is actually to, you know, make a button or just any input that the player can give to activate the ability because it's like unless you're making the doors crucifix you want to have like a button or like some key bind for the ability and this is where you get to have a preference okay your own amazing and unique opinion so you you know you could make a button you know screen gui text button and you could i don't know just drag it around customize it or you could also do a key bind which i think is actually better and easier and so that's what i'm gonna do literally all you have to do is you need to say game okay if i know i know very hard user input service okay okay we're entering big leagues here but hold on we're not done yet input began do you know what this does do you know what this little little input began does it fires whenever input is begin. So, you know, once you've calmed down, you know, collected your thoughts together, we need to connect this to a function. What the hell is going on here? All right. We're using the user input service basically to detect whenever an input begins, right? What input? We don't know. This will fire whenever any input begins. Okay. And then we will connect it to a function, meaning any code here, we want it to be ran whenever just input begins, okay? But then how do we know what input? Well, that's the beauty of connecting because this input began connection gives us two things. It gives us the input and the game processed event. Now, input is pretty self-explanatory, okay? It's just the input. You can call this whatever you want. I'll just call it imp for short. And the same thing with game processed event, which I'll call proc. And all you have to know is that game processed event will be equal to true if the player um, hits the input while doing something else. So for example, if the player is typing in chat proc will be true okay but if the player is like actually playing the game then proc will be false okay so if proc is true the player isn't playing the game they're like chatting or doing something else that isn't playing the game so if proc is equal to true then return end meaning if proc is true then we just ended the function and do nothing so then after that little security check we can just say if input and the beauty of input is that roblox gives us so much data that we actually have different like things that we can do with this input right we can check its key code we can check its user input type and user input state okay now look if you're coding right now you can experiment with these but what we want is key code because this will allow us to understand what like keyboard key has been pressed okay so here i'm basically asking okay if the input dot key code is equal to enum which is just a way for you to access any value okay so key code is a value so to access key codes you need to put enum so enum dot key code and then you just have all of these keys and so for this ability i'll just say e okay because i don't know explode um e is just usually like you know the main interact button so like i think it fits quite well so if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot e then well then we could actually print pressed E. And I'm pressing E and it's printing. And by the way, my character is floating right now because he is better than every single one of you. Now, a small issue with this though is that it is spammable. And we probably want a cooldown for our, you know, ability. Let's just play a game, okay? Let's see if you can understand what I'm doing here, okay? Local DB timer. What does that mean? Who knows, okay? And so then let's see, okay, if proc isn't true, okay, and if um, you know, the player is actually playing the game, maybe we want to set DB, which is this, equal to true, okay? like so and then maybe actually what we want to do with proc so we check if proc is equal to true and then we end the function maybe we can also check if db is equal to false then return the function or actually my bad i should say true if db is equal to true then we stop the function so what this is doing is now the very first time we press e it's going to run this function is going to check for if db is equal to true which it isn't so it's going to let us do it 
but then we set db to true. All the other times that we're gonna press e afterwards, they're not gonna work because we set db to true. And then what we do now is we have to wait, or I guess task.wait, okay? And so then after we wait for our cooldown, we can just set db back to false. Do you see what we're doing here, right? When we set it to true, we basically, meaning that we just lock all of the other events from happening, we do our thing, we wait, and then we set it back to false. So now, so now the next um, input can happen. And so to show you this in action, in three seconds, I'm about to start spamming my E key. Let me actually, let me actually move my mic closer to the E key, so hopefully you can hear. Yeah, so after all of that spamming, uh, it only registered three times, which is perfect. It means our cooldown works. So now you might be thinking, okay, we have our keybind or, you know, our button, whichever one you chose to do. Now what? Well, probably what we want to do now is actually script the ability, right? The issue here, though, however, is that we're actually doing this on a local script. And like, if you're a beginner developer or, you know, you just aren't a developer at all, the issue with doing things on a local script is that local means it's only for you right? So like, if the user presses E, and then I, I, you know, I try and code in the ability, it's only going to happen for the person who pressed it. But all of the other players will not actually see anything, right? So if we want other players to actually see things, we need to do it on a server script. And so the way we can actually ask the server to do something inside of a local script, we just need to send it a message, right? And there's a very specific item, which actually allows us to do that, Call the remote event. And literally, the way we send the message is we just get the remote event. So right now it's in replicated storage. So we just say game, replicated storage, and then let's just wait just to make sure that it's loaded in. And then we fire, fire server, like so. And then what I'll do is I will copy this remote events, okay? I'll paste it inside of the script. But then instead of firing, because we don't want to fire, we want to actually catch the event, we'll say dot on, 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 damn on server event and so then we'll connect that to a function which will then give us the player who fired the server who i will just call player okay so now whenever the player presses the actual key it's gonna fire to the server and then we actually have the player who activated the ability and this is where we get a little more detailed okay so my ability is actually very simple it's just explode every single player that isn't our player but yours might be something more complicated like stopping every single player from moving right or maybe your ability is to teleport the player um you know five studs towards the direction that they're looking or something what i like to do okay is in my head and then you know i write it in the code as well i literally just think of detailed steps that i would need to take to ensure my goal okay and if I and if I, like I don't know how to do a step, I can just Google it. Okay, so it's not that difficult, right? Just make the steps, even if you don't know how to do some of them, because then you can just Google them. So for this ability to make every player explode except for our player, the first thing we probably would need to do is we'd need to loop through every single player in the game. Okay, but then to explode a player, we actually need to make sure that they have a character in the game, right? Because like you can play a game. But then you might not have a character and in case you don't know like a character is just it's just your 3d model right so there's a difference between a player and their character and sometimes players don't have characters maybe maybe they just died okay so then what we need to do is we need to check if player has a character and then we also need to check if the um if the player to explode isn't the player who used the ability and then we probably need to um create an explosion and then uh, position it to be in the middle of the player okay and so we're basically going to do this for every single player we're going to create an explosion for every single player and then position it to that player and so now we literally just run through all of these okay so to loop through something you need to use a for loop okay so for i comma v in in short i is just equal to the index or in this case it's just the amount of times that we've looped so the very first time we loop i is going to be equal to 1. Then the second time we it loops, i is going to be equal to 2, okay? And v, in this case, is going to be equal to the value or the player, right? So it's going to be the player who we're currently looping through. And again, you can name these two literally whatever you want. And then to get every single player currently in the game, we need to do game.players, get players. That's it. So what this loop does is it's going to go through every single player and then do something, right? And, and then v is going to be equal to the player who we're currently looping through. Now we need to check if the player has a character. So we'll say if not v dot character, then return or not not return. My bad. Continue because the issue with return is that it would actually like cancel the entire thing. 
well continue we'll just skip this loop and move on to the next one right so that's what we want to do and then the next thing we want to check is we need to make sure that this player who we're looping through isn't equal to our player so literally just if v is equal to player then continue end and then we need to create an explosion right so i can just say local which makes a variable explosion <laughs> I'm creative i know instance.new explosion right so this just creates a new explosion and then we need to position it to be in the middle of the player so i can say explosion dot position is equal to v character wait for child humanoid root part which is a part that every single character has it's basically like the main part of every character the root part if you will and then the final step here just so we actually see the explosion is we need to put it inside of the workspace so we have to parent it to the workspace all right so i just made a test server which basically just took me and then just made three of them and now i will activate the ability in three two one <laughs> like you can literally just take this formula okay and then just do it for any single ability oh but my ability requires for me to know uh, where the player is facing how do i do that bro bro how to see where roblox player is facing look vector of c frame humanoid root part dot c frame dot look vector times three but yeah so because of this video i hope to see a lot less of these like stupid new ability tutorials pop up bro real talk nobody needs them okay it's not that difficult to make abilities if you're like a beginner or like you haven't even developed at all and you actually do like the way i explain things i have a free series of beginner and advanced tutorials which like they're part of a paid course right but like i decided to make those videos free because you know i'm very nice so check that out in the pinned comments and we are back to basics thank you for watching oh that's oh that's not good what did i do there we go okay now we're back to basics